for Barton. Will you put a record on and shut up? <laughs> certainly, love. How are we going to work this? Mixed doubles? Well, you certainly don't think I'm going to dance with you, do you? No, not with him around, that's for sure. And not with Twinkletoes here, either. Well, I'll dance with anyone. I'll dance by myself. Honey. I dance like the wind. All right, kiddies, chew up and hit the sack. Honey. All right, George, cut that out. Cut it out, George. What, Martha? What? Honey. Cut it out, George. What? All right, you son of a bitch. Why did you say, Laura? You son of a... Will you stop? Why did you stop? Honey. Stop that. I thought it was fitting, Martha. Oh, you did, huh? You're always at me when I'm having a good time. I'm sorry, Just honey. Just don't leave me alone. Well, why don't you choose, Martha? Martha's going to run things. The little lady's going to lead the band. I like to dance, and you don't want me to. I like you to you dance. Just, just leave me alone. Martha's going to put on some rhythm she understands. Sacre du printemps, maybe. Hi, sexy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Choose it, Martha. Do your stuff. You're done right. You want to dance with me, angel tits? What did you call my wife? Oh, boy. No. If I can't do my interpretive dance, I don't want to dance with anyone. I'll just sit here and... Okay, so. Let's go. Hmm? Oh. Hi. <laughs> we'll just sit here and watch. That's right. Hey, you are strong, aren't you? Uh-huh. Oh, I like that. Uh-huh. You're dancing like they've danced before. It's a familiar dance. They both know it. Don't be shy. Oh, not. It's a very old ritual, monkey nipples. Old as they come. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, I like the way you move. I like the way you move, too. They like the way they move. That's nice. I'm surprised George didn't give you his side of things. Aren't they cute? Well, he didn't. That surprises me. Does it? Mm hmm yeah. He usually does, when he gets the chance. Oh, what do you know? It's really a very sad story. You have ugly talents, Martha. Is it? It would make you weep. Hideous gifts. Is that so? Don't encourage her. Encourage me. Go on. I warn you, don't encourage her. He warned you. Don't encourage me. I heard him. Tell me more. Well, Georgie boy had lots of big ambitions, in spite of something funny in his past. Martha. Which Georgie boy here turned into a novel. His first attempt, and also his last. <laughs> <laughs> I rhymed. I rhymed. I warn you, Martha. <laughs> yeah, you rhymed. Go on. Go on. But Daddy took a look at Georgie's novel. You're looking for a punch in the mouth. You know that, Martha. Oh, do tell. And he was very shocked by what he read. He was? Yes, he was. A novel all about a naughty boy child. I will not tolerate this. Okay. <laughs> naughty boy child who, um... Who killed his mother and his father, Dad? Stop it, Martha. And Daddy said, Look here, I will not let you publish such a thing. <laughs> that's it. The dancing's over, that's it. Go on now. What do you think you're doing, huh? Violence? Violence? And Daddy <laughs> said, Look here, kid, you don't think for a second I'm gonna let you publish this crap, do you? <laughs> not in your life, baby. Not while you're teaching here. You publish that goddamn book and you're out. On your ass. Desist. Desist. <laughs> Desist. Oh, violence. Violence? Why, the idea. A teacher at a respected, conservative institution like this in a town like New Carthage publishing a book like that? If you respect your position here, young man, young whippersnapper, yeah. you'll just withdraw that man. I will not be made mock of. You will not be made mock of, for Christ's sake. I will not. The game is over. Imagine such a thing, a book about a boy who murders his mother and kills his father and pretends it's all an accident. An accident. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> And you want to know the clincher? You want to know what big, brave Georgie said to no, Daddy? No, 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 wait, no. Wait a minute Georgie now. said, but Daddy, I mean, <laughs> but there, it isn't a novel at all. 
Not a novel? No, sir. It isn't a novel at all. You will not say this. Hey. The hell I won't. Keep away from me, you bastard. No, sir. This isn't a novel at all. This is the truth. This really happened to me. I'll kill you. <laughs> hey. Violent. Violent. Hey. It happened to me. To me. You satanic bitch. Stop that. Violent. Stop that. Violent. <laughs> Now that is enough now! Uh, oh. Oh. All right. All right. Very quiet now. We will all be very quiet. Murder. Murder. Okay. That's enough. Well, that's one game. What should we do now, huh? <laughs> oh, come on. Let's think of uh, something else. We've played Humiliate the Host. We've gone through that one. What should we do now? Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. I mean, come on. We must know other games, college-type types like us. That can't be the limit of our vocabulary, can it? I think maybe. Let's see now. What else can we do? There are other games. How about, how about Hump the Hostess? Huh? How about that? How about Hump the Hostess? You want to play that one? You want to play Hump the Hostess? Huh? Huh? Calm down now. <laughs> or is that for later? Mount her like a goddamn dog. Ooh, hump the Hostess. Oh, just <laughs> shut up, will you? You don't want to play that now, huh? You want to save that game till later. Well, what will we play now? We got to play a game. Portrait of a man drowning. I am not drowning. You told me to shut up. I'm sorry. No, you're not. I'm sorry. I've got it. I'll tell you what game we'll play. We're done with humiliate the host this round. Anyway, we're done with that, and we don't want to play hump the hostess yet, not yet. So I know what we'll play. We'll play a little round of get the guests. How about that? How about a little game of get the guests? Oh, Jesus, George. Book dropper, child mentioner. I don't like these games. Yeah, I think maybe we've had enough of games now. Oh, no, no, we haven't. We've had only one game. Now we're going to have another. You can't fly on one game. I think maybe... Silence! Now, how are we going to play get the guests? Oh, for God's sake, George. Be quiet. I wonder. I wonder. Okay. Well, Martha, in her indiscreet way, well, not really indiscreet, because Martha is a naive at heart. Anyway, Martha told you all about my first novel. True or false, huh? I mean, true or false that there ever was such a thing, huh? But Martha told you about it, my first novel, my memory book, which I sort of preferred she hadn't, but hell, that's blood under the bridge. But what she didn't do, what Martha didn't tell you about, is she didn't tell us all about my second novel. No, you didn't know about that, did you, Martha? About my second novel? True or false? True or false? No. No. Well, it's an allegory, really, probably, but it can be read as straight, cozy, prose, and it's all about a nice young couple who come out of the Middle West. It's a bucolic, you see, and this nice young couple comes out of the Middle West, and he's blonde and about 30, and he's a scientist, a teacher, a scientist, and his mouse is a wifey little type who gargles brandy all the time. Just and, here. and they got to know each other when they was only teensy little types, and they used to get under the vanity table and poke around. I said, and just a minute. This is my game. You play yours, you people. This is my game. I want to hear the story. I love stories. George, for heaven's sake. And. And Mousy's father was a holy man, see, and he ran sort of a traveling clip joint based on Christ and all those girls, and he took 
the faithful. That's all. Just took him. Oh, this is this is familiar. Oh, no kidding. And he died eventually, Mousy's par, and they pried him open on all sorts of money fell out. Jesus money, Mary money, loot. Oh, I've I've heard this story before. Honey. But that's in the backwash in the early part of the book. Anyway, Blondie and his frau out of the plain states came. Very funny, George. <laughs> Thank you. And settled in a town just like Nouveau Carthage here. I don't think you better go on, mister. Do you not? No, I, I don't think you better. I love familiar stories. They're the best. How right you are. But Blondie was in disguise, really, all got up as a teacher, because his baggage ticket had bigger things writ on it. H.I. High. Historical inevitability. There's no need for you to go any further now. Let them go on. We shall. And he had this baggage with him. And part of this baggage was in the form of his mouse. We don't have to listen to this. Why not? Your bride has a point. And one of the things nobody could understand about Blondie was his baggage. His mouse, I mean. Here he was, Pan Kansas swimming champion or something, and he had this mouse of whom he was solicitous to a point that faileth human understanding, given that she was sort of a simp in the long run. This isn't fair of you. Perhaps not. Like, as I said, his mouse, she too did brandy immodestly and spent half of her time in the upchuck. Oh, I know these people. Do you? But she was money baggage, amongst other things, godly money ripped from the golden teeth of the unfaithful, a pragmatic extension of the big dream, and she was put up with. I don't like this story. Please, please don't. Maybe you better stop, George. And she was put up with. Stop! Please, please don't. Beg, baby. George. And, oh, we get a flashback here to how they got married. No. Yes. Why? How they got married. Well, how they got married is this. The mouse got all puffed up one day, and she went over to Blondie's house, and she stuck out her puff, and she said, Look at me. I don't like this. Stop it. Look at me. I'm all puffed up. Oh, my goodness, said Blondie. And so they were married. And so they were married. And then... And then... What? And then what? No, no. And then the puff went away. Like magic. Poof. Jesus, God. The puff went away. Poof. Honey, I didn't mean to, honestly. I didn't mean to. You told them? You told them? Oh, oh no, 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 no. You couldn't have told them. Honey, oh, I didn't no. mean to. Oh, no. Honey, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. And that's how you play Get the Guests. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna be sick. Naturally. Oh. Honey. Hey. How'd you do it, huh? Mm. How'd you make your secret little murder stud boy doesn't know about, huh? Pills? Pills? You got a secret supply of pills or what? Apple jelly? Willpower? Hey, leave me alone! I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna be sick! Oh, oh. God almighty. The patterns of history. You shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have done that at all. I hate hypocrisy. It's cruel and vicious. She'll get over it. And damaging. She'll recover. Damaging to me! To you? Yes! Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. By God, you gotta have a swine to show you where the truffles are. Well, you just rearrange your alliances, boy. You just pick up the pieces where you can. You just look around and make the best of things. You scramble back up on your feet. Go look after your wife. Yeah. Go pick up the pieces and plan some new strategy. You're going to regret this? Probably. I regret everything. I mean, I'm going to make you regret this. No doubt. Acute embarrassment, eh? I'll play the charades like you got them set up. I'll play in your language. I'll be what you say I am. You are already. You just don't know it. No. No. Not really. But I'll be it, mister. I'll show you something come to life you wish you hadn't set up. Go clean up the mess. You just wait, mister. Very good, George. Thank you, Martha. Really good. I'm glad you liked it. I mean, you did a good job. You really fixed it. Uh-huh. It's the most 
life you've shown in a long time. You bring out the best of me, baby. Yeah, pygmy hunting. Pygmy? You really a bastard. I? I? Yeah, you. Baby, if quarterback there is a pygmy, you've certainly changed your style. What are you after now, giants? You make me sick. Oh, it's perfectly all right for you. I mean, you can make your own rules. You can go around like a hopped-up Arab, slashing away at everything in sight, scarring up half the world if you want to, but somebody else try it. No, sir. You miserable... Oh, why, baby, I did it all for you. I thought you'd like it, sweetheart. It's sort of to your taste, blood, crime carnage and all. Why, I thought you'd get all excited, sort of heave and pan and come running at me, your melons bobbling. You've really screwed up, George. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, Arthur. I mean it. You really have. You can sit there in that chair of yours. You can sit there with a gin running out of your mouth, and you can humiliate me. You can tear me apart all night, and that's perfectly all right. That's okay. You can stand it. I cannot stand it. You can stand it. You married me for it. That is a desperately sick lie. Don't you know it? Even yet. Oh, Martha. My arm has gotten tired whipping you. You're mad. For 23 years. You're deluded, Martha. You're deluded. It's not what I wanted. I thought at least you were onto yourself. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh, I'm onto myself. No, no, you're sick. I'll show you who's sick. All right, Martha, you're going too far. I'll show you who's sick. I'll show stop you. Stop it. Now stop it. I'll show you who's sick. Boy, you're really having a field day, huh? Well, I'm going to finish you before I'm through with you. Well, you and the quarterback, you both going to finish me? Before I'm through with you, you'll wish you died in that automobile, you bastard. And you'll wish you never mentioned our son. You. Now, I said I warned you. I'm impressed. I warned you not to go too far. I'm just beginning. I'm numbed enough. And I don't mean by liquor, though. Maybe that's been part of the process. A gradual, over the years, going to sleep of the brain cells... I'm numbed enough now to be able to take you when we're alone. I don't listen to you, or when I do listen to you, I, I sift everything. I bring everything down to reflex response so I don't really hear you, which is the only way to manage it. But you've taken a new track, Martha, over the past couple of centuries, or however long it's been I've lived in this house with you, that makes it just too much. Too much. I don't mind your dirty under things in public. Well, I, I do mind, but I've reconciled myself to that. But you've moved bag and baggage into your own fantasy world now, and you've started playing variations on your own distortions. And as a result... Nuts! Yes, you have. Nuts! Well, you can go on like that as long as you want to. And when you're done... Have you ever listened to your sentences, George? Have you ever listened to the way you talk? You're so frigging convoluted. That's what you are. You, 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 you talk like you were writing one of your stupid papers. Actually, I'm rather worried about you, about your mind. Oh, don't you worry about my mind, sweetheart. I think I'll have you committed. Oh, baby, aren't you something? I've got to find somebody <laughs> to really get it. Oh, you got to me, George. You don't have to do anything. 23 years of you has been quite enough. Oh, will you go quietly now? You know what's happened, George. Do you want to know what's really happened? It snapped. Finally. Not me. It. The whole arrangement. You can go along forever and everything manageable. You make all sorts of excuses to yourself. You know, this is life. The hell with it. Maybe tomorrow he'll be dead. Maybe tomorrow you'll be dead. All sorts of excuses. But then, one day... One night, something happens, and snap, it breaks, and you just don't give a damn anymore. I've tried with you, baby, you really, I've tried. Oh, come off it, Martha. Oh, I've tried, I really tried. You're a monster, you are. I'm loud, and I'm vulgar. And I wear the pants in this house because somebody's got to, but I am not a monster. I am not. You're a spoiled, self-indulgent, willful, dirty-minded, liquor-rich... Snap! It went snap. Look, I'm, I'm not 
going to try to get through to you anymore. I'm not even going to try. There was a second back there, maybe. There was a second, just a second, when I could have gotten through to you, when maybe we could have cut through all this crap. But that's past, and now I'm not going to try. Once a month, Martha. I've gotten used to it. Once a month, and we get misunderstood, Martha. The good-hearted girl underneath the barnacles. The little miss at the touch of kindness and bring the bloom again. And I believed it more times than I want to remember, because I don't want to think that I'm that much of a sucker. I don't believe you. I just don't believe you. There is no moment, there is no moment anymore when we could come together. Well, maybe you're right, baby. You can't come together with nothing, and you're nothing. Snap. It went snap tonight at Daddy's party. I sat there at Daddy's party, and I watched. I watched you sitting there, and I watched the younger men around you, the man who were going to go somewhere. And I sat there and I watched you and you weren't there. And it snapped. It, it finally snapped. And I'm going to howl it out and I am not going to give a damn what I do. And I'm going to make the damn biggest explosion you ever heard. You try it and I'll beat you in your own game. Is that a threat, George? That's huh? a threat, Martha. Oh, you're gonna get it, baby. Be careful, Martha. I'll rip you to pieces. You aren't mad enough. You haven't got the guts. Total war. Total. Well, she's resting. Oh. Yeah? Is she all right? I think so. Now, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, forget about it. Happens all the time around here. She'll be all right. She lying down? You uh, put her upstairs on a bed? No, actually. Uh, may I? She's in the bathroom on the bathroom floor. She's lying there. Wow. That's not very nice. She likes it. She says it's cool. Still, I, I don't think... Look, if she wants to lie on the bathroom floor, let her. Maybe she'd be more comfortable in the tub? No, she says she likes the floor. She took off the mat. She's lying on the tiles. She she lies on the floor a lot. She really does. Oh. She, she gets lots of headaches and things, and she always lies on the floor. Oh. Is there ice? What? Ice. Is there ice? Ice? Ice, yes. Ice. Ice. Attaboy. Oh, yes, I'll get some. Well, go. Besides, we want to be alone. I wouldn't be surprised, Martha. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? Not a bit, Martha. No? No. You'll try anything, Martha. Actually, she's very frail and slim hip. Yes, exactly. Is that why you don't have any kids? Well, I don't know that that's, that has anything to do with any... Thing. Well, if it does, who cares, huh? Pardon? I... Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I said... Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, hand me a cigarette, lover. Oh. Hmm, that's a good boy. Ah, uh, thanks. Mm. Oh, now, for being such a good boy, you can give me a kiss. Come on. Look, I don't think we should... Oh, come on, baby. A friendly kiss? Well... You won't get hurt, little boy. Not so little. Oh, I'll bet you're not. Come on. But what if he should come back in and... Uh... George? Oh, don't worry about him. Besides, who could object to a friendly little kiss? It's all in the faculty. <laughs> <laughs> We're a close-knit family here. Daddy always says so. Daddy wants us to get to know each other. That's what he had the party for tonight. So, come on. Let's get to know each other a little bit. It isn't that I don't want to. Believe me. You're a scientist, aren't you? Come on. Make an experiment. Make a little experiment. 
experiment on old Martha. Oh, not very old. That's right, not very old, but lots of good experience. Lots of it. Uh, I'll bet. <laughs> It'll be a nice change for you, too. Yes, it would. And you could go back to your little wife all refreshed. She wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> well, nobody else is going to know either. Mm. I know. I can tell. Later, huh? <coughs> ah, here we are. Ices for the lamps of China. Manchuria thrown in. You better watch those yellow bastards, my love. They aren't amused. Why don't you come on over to our side and we'll blow the hell out of them. And then we can split up the money between us and be on easy street. What do you say? Well, sure. Hey, Ice. Right. <laughs> Hello, Martha, my dear. Dove, you look radiant. Thank you. Well, now, let me see. I've got the ice. Gotten. Got, Martha. God is perfectly correct. It's just a little archaic like you. What are you so cheerful about? Let's see now. I've got the ice. Can I make someone a drink? Martha, can I make you a drink? Yeah, why not? Indeed, why not? Martha, you've been nibbling away at the glass. I have not. I see you're making your own, uh -huh. which is fine. Uh -huh. Fine, I'll just hooch up Martha here, and then we'll be all set. All set for what? Why, I don't know. We're having a party, aren't we? I passed your wife in the hall. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I passed the John, and I looked in on her. Peaceful, so peaceful, sound asleep, and she's actually sucking her thumb. Oh. <laughs> Rolled up like a fetus, sucking well, away. Well, I suppose she's all right. Of course she is. There you are. Thanks. And now one for me. It's my turn. Oh, never, baby. It's never your turn. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, Martha. You moving on the principle the worm turns? Well, the worm part's okay, because that fits you fine. But the turning part? Uh-uh. You're in a straight line, buddy boy, and it doesn't lead anywhere. Oh, except maybe the green. <laughs> well, you just hold that thought, Martha. Hug it close. Run your hands over it. Me... I'm going to sit down, if you'll excuse me. I'm going to sit down over there and read a book. You're going to what? I am going to read a book. Read. 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 You've heard of it? What do you mean you're going to read? What's the matter with you? There's nothing the matter with me, Martha. I'm going to read a book. That's all. We've got company. I know, my dear. But um, it's after four o'clock, and I always read around this time. Now, you... Go about your business. I'll sit here very You quiet. read in the afternoon. You read at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You don't read at 4 o'clock in the morning. Nobody reads at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, now, now. I, he's going to read a book. <laughs> the son of a bitch is going to read a book. <laughs> so it would seem. Well, we can amuse ourselves, can't we? I imagine so. We're going to amuse ourselves, George. Uh-huh, that's nice. Oh, you might not like it. No, no, now you go right ahead. You entertain your guests. I'm going to entertain myself, too. Good, good. Ha, ha, you're a riot, George. Uh-huh. Well, I'm a riot, too, George. Yes, you are, Martha. <clears throat> you know what I'm doing, George? No, Martha, what are you doing? I'm entertaining. I'm entertaining one of the guests. I'm necking with one of the guests. Oh, that's nice. Which one? Oh, by God, you're funny. <laughs> Is someone at the door, Martha? Never mind that. I said I was necking with one of the guests. Good, good. You go right on. Good? Yes, good. Good for you. Oh, I see what you're up to, you lousy. I'm up to page 100 and... Cut it. Just cut it out. God damn bongs. They're chimes, Martha. Why don't you go back to your necking and stop bothering me? I want to read. You miserable. I'll show you. No. Show him, Martha. He hasn't seen it. Maybe he hasn't seen it. You haven't seen it yet, have you? I... I have no respect for you. And none for yourself, either. 
I don't know what the younger generation's coming you to. You don't. You don't even. Care, you're quite right. I couldn't care less. So you just take this bag of laundry here, throw her over your shoulder. You're disgusting. Because you are going to hump Martha, I'm disgusting. Motherfucker! <laughs> 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 Go wait for me. Uh, go, go, go wait for me in the kitchen. Come on, baby. Please, wait for me. In the kitchen. You good, baby. <laughs> now you listen to me. I'd rather read, Martha, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. Now you pay attention to me. You come off this kick, Your Honor. Or I, or I swear to God, I'll do it. I swear to God. I will follow that guy into the kitchen, and then I'll take him upstairs, and I So will... what, Martha? Okay. Okay. You asked for it, and you are gonna get it. Lord, Martha, if you want the boy that much, have him, but do it honestly, will you? Don't cover it over with all this, all this footwork. I'll make you sorry you made me want to marry you. I'll make you regret the day you ever decided to come to this college. I'll make you sorry you ever let yourself down. And the West, encumbered by crippling alliances, and burdened with a morality too rigid to accommodate itself to the swing of events, must eventually fall. <laughs> That's right. Go at it. I'm going to get you, Martha. I'm going to get you. Act Three. The Exorcism. Goddamn, whatever it is, creeping vine and throw me over your shoulder like an old shoe. George? 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 What are you doing? Hiding or something? George! Oh, my God. Deserted. Abandoned. Left out in the cold like an old pussy cat. <laughs> Can I get you a drink, Martha? Why, thank you, George. That's very kind of you. No, Martha. No, why I do anything for you. Would you, George? Why I do anything for you too? Would you, Martha? Why certainly, George. Martha, I've misjudged you. And I've misjudged you too, George. Where is everybody? Hump the hostess. <laughs> Fat chance. Fat chance. Oh. Daddy? Daddy? Martha is abandoned. Left to her own vice at something o'clock in the old a.m. Daddy White Mouse, do you really have red eyes? Do you? Let me see. Oh, you do, you do. Daddy, you have red eyes. Because you cry all the time, don't you, Daddy? Yes, you do. You cry all the time. I'll give all of you bastards five to come out from where you're hiding. I cry all the time too, Daddy. I cry all the time, but deep inside, so no one can see me. I cry all the time, and Georgie cries all the time too. We both cry all the time, 
And then what we do, we cry and we take our tears and we put them in the ice box in the goddamn ice tray <laughs> until they're all frozen. <laughs> We put them in our drink. <laughs> Up the drain, down the spout, dead, gone, forgotten. Up the spout, not down the spout. Up the spout, the poker night. Up the spout. I've got windshield wipers on my eyes because I married you, baby. Oh, Martha, you'll be a songwriter yet. Clink. 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 My God, you've gone crazy too. Clink. I said you've gone crazy too. Probably, probably. You've all gone crazy. I come downstairs, and what happens? What happens? My wife's gone into the can with a liquor bottle, and she winks at me. Winks at me? She's never wunk at you? What a shame. She's lying down on the floor again, the tiles all curled up, and she starts peeling off the label off the liquor bottle, the brandy bottle. Oh, we'll never get the deposit back that way. And I ask her what she's doing, and she goes, Shh, nobody knows I'm here. And I come back in here, and you're sitting there going, Clink, for God's sake. Clink. Clink. You've all gone crazy. Yeah, sad but true. Where is your husband? He is vanished. Boop. They're all crazy. Nuts. Oh, well, tis the refuge we take when the unreality of the world weighs too heavy on our tiny head. Relax. Sink into it. You're no better than anybody else. I think I am. Well, you're certainly a flop in some departments. I beg your pardon. I said you're certainly a flop in some I'm de sorry I disappointed you. I didn't say I was disappointed, stupid. <sighs> You should try me sometime when we haven't been drinking for ten hours and maybe... I I'll... wasn't talking about your potential. I... To you, your husband's a flop, I'm a flop. You're all flops. I am the Earth Mother and you're all flops. I <sighs> disgust me. I'd pass my life in crummy, totally pointless infidelities. <laughs> Would-be infidelities. Hump the hostess, <laughs> that's a laugh. A bunch of boozed up, impotent lunkheads. Martha makes goo goo eyes, and the lunkheads grin and roll their beautiful, beautiful eyes back and grin some more. And Martha licks her chops, and the lunkheads slap over to the bar to pick up a little courage. And they pick up a little courage, and they bounce back over to old Martha, who does a little dance for them, which heats them all up mentally, and so they slap over to the bar again and pick up a little more courage, and their wives and sweethearts stick their noses up in the air, right through the ceiling sometimes, which sends the lunkheads back to the soda fountain again, where they fuel up some more, while Martha Pooh sits there with her dress up over her head, suffocating. You don't know how stuffy it is with your dress up over your head, suffocating, waiting for the lunkheads. So finally, they get their courage up. But that's all, baby. Oh, my, there is sometimes some very nice potential, but oh, my, 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 my. <sighs> but that's how it is in a civilized society. All oh, the gorgeous lunkheads, poor baby. <laughs> There's only one man in my life who has ever made me happy. Do you know that? One. Hmm. The, the. What do you call it? Well, the lawnmower or something. No, <laughs> I'd forgotten him. But when I think about him and me, it's almost like being a voyeur. <laughs> No, I didn't mean him. I meant George, of course. Ah, uh, George, my husband. You're kidding. Am I? 
You must be. Him? Him. Sure. Sure. You don't believe it? Why, of course I do. You always deal in appearances. Oh, for God's sake. George, you is out somewhere there in the dark. George, who's good to me and whom I revile. Who understands me and whom I push off. Who can make me laugh and I choke it back in my throat. Who can hold me at night so that it's warm and whom I will bite so that it's blood. Who keeps learning the games we play as quickly as I can change the rules. Who can make me happy and I do not wish to be happy. And yes, I do wish to be happy. George and Martha. Sad, sad, sad. Sad. Whom I will not forgive for having come to rest, for having seen me and having said, Yes, this will do. Who has made the hideous, the hurting, the insulting mistake of loving me and must be punished for it. George and Martha, sad, sad, sad. Sad? Who tolerates, which is intolerable. Who is kind, which is cruel. Who understands, which is beyond comprehension. George and Martha, sad, sad, sad. Someday. <laughs> Some night, some stupid liquor-ridden night, I will go too far, and I'll either break the man's back or push him off for good, which is what I deserve. I don't think he's got a vertebrae intact. <laughs> you don't, huh? You don't think so. Oh, little boy. You got yourself hunched over that microphone of yours. Microscope. Yes, and you don't see anything, do you? You see everything but the goddamn mind. You see all the little specks and crap, but you don't see what goes on, do you? I know, when a man's had his back broken, I can see that. Can you? You're damn right. Oh, you know so little. And you're going to take over the world, huh? All right, now... You think a man's got his back broken because he makes like a clown and walks bent, huh? Is that really all you know? I said all right. Ooh, the stallion's mad, huh? The gilding's all upset. <laughs> you, you swing wild, don't you? Mm -hmm. Just anywhere. Ha! 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 I'm a Gatling gun. Ha! <laughs> oh, you poor little bastard. Get out of everything. Go answer the door. What did you say? I said go answer the door. What are you, deaf? You want me to go answer the door? That's right, lunkhead. Answer the door. There must be something you can do well. Are you too dumb to do that, too? Can't you get the latch up, either? <laughs> Look, there is no need... Answer to... it! You can be houseboy around here for a while. You can start off being houseboy right now. Look, lady, I'm no flunky to you. Sure you are. You're ambitious, aren't you, boy? You didn't chase me around the kitchen and up the goddamn stairs out of mad, driven passion, did you not? You were thinking a little bit about your career, weren't you? Well, you can just houseboy your way up the ladder for a while. There's no limit to you, is there? <sighs> no, baby, none. Go answer the door. Look, boy, once you stick your nose in it, you're not going to pull out just whenever you feel like it. You're in for a while. Now, get! Aimless, wanton, pointless. No, 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 no. Just do what you're told. Show old Martha there's something you can do. Huh? Atta boy. I'm coming, for Christ's sake. Wonderful, marvelous. Just as you go out, everywhere I go, people always... Stop that! <laughs> Sorry, baby. Come on now, open the little door. Oh, how lovely. Flowers. Flores, palas, muertas. Flores. <laughs> Sonny, you've come home for your birthday at last. Stay away from me. <laughs> That's the houseboy, for God's sake. Really? That's not our own little Sunny Jim, our own little all-American something or other? <laughs> well, I certainly hope not. He's been acting awful funny if it is. Oh, oh, bet. Chippy, chippy, chippy. <laughs> uh, I, I brought you these flowers, Marta, because I will catch you. Oh, well, hell, gee. Pansies, rosemary, violence. 
My wedding bouquet. Well, if you two kids don't mind, I think I'll just... Ah, uh, you just stay where you are. Make my hubby a drink. I don't think I will. No, Martha, no. That will be too much. He's your houseboy, baby, not mine. I'm nobody's houseboy. Now! I'm, I'm nobody's, nobody's houseboy now. now. Vicious <laughs> children, huh? That's right. Vicious children with their oh-so-sad <laughs> games, hopscotching their way through life, etc., etc. Is that it? Something like it. Screw, baby. Oh, him can. Him too full of booze. Willie? Mm. Here, dump these in some gin. Oh. What a terrible thing to do to Martha's Snapdragons. Oh, is that what they are? Yep. And here, I went out in the moonlight to pick them for Martha tonight and for our sunny boy tomorrow for his birthday. There is no moon now. I saw it go down from the bedroom. From the bedroom? Well, there was a moon. There couldn't have been a moon. Well, there was. There is. There is no moon. The moon went down. There is a moon. The moon is up. I'm afraid you're mistaken. No, no. There is no goddamn moon. My dear Martha, I did not pick Snapdragon in the stony dark. I did not go stumbling around Daddy's greenhouse in the pitch. Yes, you did. You would. Martha, I do not pick flowers in the blink. I have never robbed a hothouse without there is a light from heaven. There is no moon. The moon went down. That may very well be, Chastity. The moon may very well have gone down, but it came back up. The moon does not come back up. When the moon has gone down, it stays down. You don't know anything. If the moon went down, then it came back up. Bullshit! Ignorant such... Ignorance. What you you're calling ignorant? Once, once, when I was sailing past Mallorca, drinking on deck with a correspondent who was talking about Roosevelt, the moon went down, thought about it for a little, considered it, you know what I mean, and then, pop, came up again, just like that. <laughs> that is not true. That is such a lie. You must not call everything a lie, Martha. Must she? Oh, I don't know when you people are lying or what. You're damn right. You're not supposed to. Right. At any rate, I was sailing past Mallorca. You never sailed past Mallorca. Martha. You were never in the goddamn Mediterranean at all, I ever. I certainly was. My mommy and daddy took me there as a college graduation present. <laughs> was this after you killed them? Maybe. Yeah, maybe not, too. Jeez. Damn you! Truth and illusion. Who knows the difference, eh, Toots? You were never in the Mediterranean. Truth or illusion. Either way. If I wasn't in the Mediterranean, how did I get to the Aegean, huh? Overland. Yeah. Don't side with her, houseboy. I'm not a houseboy. Look, I know the game. You don't make it in the sack, you're a houseboy. I am not a houseboy. No? Well, then you must have made it in the sack. Yes? Yes, someone's lying around here. Somebody isn't playing the game straight. Yes, come on, come on. Who's lying, Martha? Come on. Tell him I'm not a houseboy. No, you're not a houseboy. So be it. Truth and illusion, George. You don't know the difference. No, but we must carry on as though we did. Amen. Snap, went the dragons. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Here we go around the mulberry bush, huh? Thank you. Skip it. I said, here we go around the mulberry bush. Yeah, yeah, we know. Snap, go the dragons. Snap. Don't, George. Snap. Don't do that. Shut up, stud. I'm not a stud. Snap. Then you're a houseboy. Which is it? Which are you, huh? Make up your mind either way. Snap. You disgust me. Well, does it matter to you, George? Snap. No, actually, it doesn't. Either way, snap. Stop <laughs> throwing those goddamn things at me. Either way, snap. I've had it. You want me to do something to him? You leave him alone. If you're a houseboy, baby, you can pick up after me. If you're a stud, you can go protect your plow. Either way, either way, everything. Oh, for God's sake. Truth or illusion, George, doesn't matter to you at all? Snap. You got your answer, baby. Got it. You just gird your blue-veined loins, girl. Now. We got one more game to play, and it's called Bringing Up Baby. Oh, for the Lord's sake. George. I don't want any fuss. You don't want any scandal around here, do you, big boy? You don't want to wreck things, do you, huh? You want to keep to your timetable, don't you? And you, pretty miss, you like fun and games, don't you? You're a sport from way back, aren't you? All right, George, all right. Good. Good. But we're not all here.
You, you, uh, you, your little white flit isn't here. Look, she's had a rough night now. She's in the can and she's... Well, we can't play without everyone here. Now that's a fact. We gotta have your little wife, Sowie. <laughs> Sowie. Cut that. Hey, get your butt out of that chair and bring the little dead back in here. Now be a good puppy. Fetch, good puppy. Go fetch. One more gone. I don't like what's going to happen. Do you know what it is? No, but I don't like it. Maybe you will, Martha. No. Oh, it's a real fun game, Martha. No more games. One more, Martha. One more game, and then Betty Bye. Everybody pack up his tools and baggage and stuff and go home. And you and me, well, we gonna climb them well-worn stairs. No, George, no. Yes, baby. No, George, please. It'll all be done with before you know it. No, George. No climb stairs with Georgie. No more games, please. It's games I don't want. No more games. Oh, sure you do, Martha. Original game girl and all. Of course you do. Ugly games. Ugly. Now this new one? You'll love it, baby. No, George. You'll have a ball. Please, George, no more games. Why don't you touch me? You keep your pores clean for the undergraduates. <sighs> now you listen to me, Martha. <sighs> you have had quite an evening, quite a night for yourself. <laughs> and you can't just cut it off whenever you've got enough blood in your mouth. We are going on, and I'm going to have at you, and it's going to make your performance tonight look like an Easter pageant. Now I want you to get yourself a little alert. I want a little life in you, baby. Stop it! Put yourself together. I want you on your feet and slugging, sweetheart, because I'm going to knock you around and I want you up for it. All right, George. What do you want, An George? Equal battle, baby, that's all. You'll get it. I want you mad. I'm mad. Get madder. Don't worry about it. Good for you, girl. Now, we're going to play this one to the death. Yours. You'd be surprised. Now, here come the tots. You be ready for this. I'm ready for you. You a bunny, honey? <laughs> bunny, honey. Well, how's the bun? Bunny, funny. <laughs> Jesus. Bunny, funny. Good for bunny. Come on, George. Honey, funny, bunny. <laughs> Jesus, God. All right. Here we go. Last game. All sit. Martha, this is a civilized game. Just get on with it. Hello, dear. It's almost dawn, for God's sake. Hello, dear. Well, speak to your little wifelet, your little bunny, for God's sake. Hello, honey. Oh, that was nice. I think we've been having a real good evening, all things considered. We've sat around and got to know each other and had fun and games. Curl up on the floor, for example. The tiles. The tiles. Snap the dragon. Peel the label. Peel the what? The label. Peel the label. I peel labels. We all peel labels, sweetie. And when you get through the skin, all three layers, <laughs> through the muscle, slosh aside the organs, then which is still sloshable, and get down to bone, you know what you do then? No. When you get down to bone, you haven't got all the way yet. There's something inside the bone, the marrow, and that's what you got to get at. The marrow, but bones are pretty resilient, especially in the young. Now, take our son. Who? Our son, Martha's and my little joy. Do you mind if I... No, 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 you go right ahead. George. Yes, Martha? Just what are you doing? Why, love, I was talking about our son. Don't. Isn't Martha something? Here we are on the eve of our boy's homecoming, the eve of his 21st birthday, the eve of his majority, and Martha says, don't talk about it. Just... Don't. But I want to, Martha. It's very important we talk about him. Now, Bunny and the houseboy or stud here, whichever he is, don't know much about Junior, and I think they should. Just don't. Hey, you, you. You want to play Bring Up Baby, don't you? Were you snapping at me? That's right. You want to hear about our bouncy boy? Yeah, and, sure. And you, my dear, you want to hear about him too, don't you? Who? Martha's my son. You have a child? Oh, indeed do we ever. Do you want to talk about him, Martha, or shall I? Don't, huh? George. All righty. Well, now, let's see. He's 
a nice kid, really, in spite of his home life. I mean, most kids will grow up neurotic, while with Martha here carrying on the way she does, sleeping till four in the p.m., climbing all over the poor bastard, trying to break the bathroom door down to wash him in the tub when he's 16, dragging strangers into the house at all hours. Okay, you... Martha! That's enough. What, do you want to take over? Why would anybody want to wash somebody who's 16 years old? Oh, for Christ's sake, honey. Why? Because it's her baby boo. Our son. You want our son? You'll have it. You want a drink, Martha? Yes. We don't have to hear about it if you don't want to. Who says so? You in a position to set the rules around here? No. Go, boy. You'll go far. All right, Martha. Your recitation. Please. What, George? Our son. All right. Our son. Our son was born in a September night, a night not unlike tonight, though tomorrow, and 21 years ago. You see, I told you. It was an easy birth. Oh, Martha, no. You labored. How you labored. It was an easy birth once it had been accepted and relaxed into. Ah, yeah, better. It was an easy birth once it had been accepted, and I was young. And I was younger. And I was young, and he was a healthy child, a red, bawling child with slippery, firm limbs. Martha thinks she saw him at delivery. With slippery, firm limbs and a forehead of black, fine, fine hair, which later, oh, oh, later, later became blonde as the sun, our son. He was a healthy child. And I had wanted a child. Oh, I had wanted a child. A son? A daughter? A child. A child. And I had my child. Our child. Our child. And we raised him. <laughs> yes, we did. We raised him. The teddy bear. In this small town. Where dreams go to die. We fight our own battles. With tears in my eyes. crackers and, and the bow and arrow he kept under his bed. The arrows were the rubber cups at their tip. At their tip, which he kept beneath his bed. Why? Why, Martha? For, for fear. For fear of... For fear. Just that. For fear. And, and sandwiches on Sunday night and Saturdays and Saturdays a banana boat. The whole peeled banana scooped down on top with green grapes for the crew. A double line of, of green grapes and along the sides stuck to the boat with Toothpicks, orange slices, shields. After the oar? A uh, carrot. Or a swizzle stick, whatever was easier. No, a carrot. And his eyes were green, green with, with, if you peered so deep into them, so deep. Bronze, bronze parentheses around the irises. Such green eyes. Blue, green, brown. And he loved the sun. He was tan before and after everyone. And in the sun, his head. Became fleece. Fleece. Beautiful, beautiful boy. Absolve domine animus omnium fidelium defunctorum ab omni vinculo delicotrum. And school, and summer camp, and sledding, and swimming. Gratia tua ilis sucurente, miran tua evidere judicium otionis. Oh, he broke his arm, how funny it was. Oh, oh, oh no, I mean, it hurt him, but it was funny. In the field, his very first cow, the first he'd ever seen, and he went to the field, to the cow, where, where the cow was grazing, head down, busy, and he mooed at it. 
<laughs> he mooed at it, and the beast, oh, surprise, swung its head up and mooed at him, all oh, three years of him, and he ran, startled, and he stumbled, and fell, and he broke his poor arm. <laughs> Et luces eternae beatitudine perfui. George cried, helpless George cried. I carried the poor lamb, George snuffling beside me. I carried the child, having fashioned a sling uh, 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 across the great field. In paradisum dead you can take ashes. And as he grew, and as he grew, oh, so wise, he walked evenly between us a hand out to each of us for what we could offer by way of support, affection, teaching, even love. And these hands still to, to hold us off a bit for mutual protection, to protect us all from George's weakness and my necessary greater strength, to protect himself and us. In memoria eterna ere justus ab auditioni malo non temebit. So so why? What is this? What are you doing? Shh. Shh. Okay. So beautiful. So wise. <laughs> All truth being relative. It was true. Beautiful, wise, perfect. There's a real mother talking. I want a child. Honey. I want a child. In principle? I want a child. I want a baby. Of course. This state, this perfection, couldn't last. Not with George. Not with George around. There, you see, I knew she'd shift. Go be still. Sorry, Mother. Can't you be still? Dominus Fibis. Not with George around. A drowning man takes down those nearest. George tried, but oh, God, how I fought him. God, how I fought him. <laughs> Lesser states can't stand those above them. Weakness and imperfection cries out against strength, goodness, and innocence. And George tried. How did I try, Martha? How did I try? How did you... what? No, no, no. He grew. Our son grew up. He, he is grown up. He's away at school, college. He's fine. Everything is fine. Oh, come on, Martha. No. That's all. Just a minute. You can't cut a story off like that, sweetheart. You started to say something. Now you say it. No. Well, I will. No. You see, Martha here stops just when the going gets good, just when things start getting a little rough. Now, Martha here is a misunderstood little girl. She really is. Not only does she have a husband who is a bog, a younger-than-she bog, albeit, not only does she have a husband who is a bog, she has, as well, a tiny problem with spiritous liquors, like she can't get enough. No more, George. And on top of all that, poor way-down girl, plus a father who really doesn't give a damn whether she lives or dies, who couldn't care less what happens to his only daughter. On top of all that, she has a son. She has a son who fought her every inch of the way, who didn't want to be turned into a weapon against his father, who didn't want to be used as a goddamn club whenever Martha didn't get things like she wanted them. Lies! Lies! Lies? All right. A son who would not disown his father, who came to him for advice, for information, for love that wasn't mixed with sickness. And you know what I mean, Martha? Who could not tolerate the slashing, braying residue that called itself his mother. Mother! Ha! All right, dear. A son who was so ashamed of his father, he asked me once if it possibly wasn't true, as he had heard from some cruel boys, maybe, that he was not our child who could not tolerate the shabby failure his father had become. Lies. Lies? Who would not bring his girlfriends to the house? In shame of his mother. Oh, of his father, who writes letters only to me. Oh, so you think. To me, at my office. Liar. I have a stack of You have no letters. And you have? He has no letters. A son, uh, a son who spends his summers away, away from his family, on any pretext, because he can't stand the shadow of a man flickering around the edges who of the house. Who spends his summers away, and he does, who spends his summers away because there isn't room for him in a house full of empty bottles, lies, strange men, and a harridan. Liar. Liar. A son who I have raised 
least as best I can against vicious odds, against the corruption of weakness and petty revenge. A son who is deep in his gut, sorry to have been born. I have tried. Oh, God, I have tried. The one thing, the one thing, I tried to carry pure and unscathed through the sewer of this marriage, through the sick nights and the pathetic stupid days, through the derision and the laughter, through the laughter, through one failure, compounding another failure, each again more sickening and more numbing than the one before, the one thing, the one person I have tried to protect, to raise above the mire of this vile and crushing marriage, the one light in all this hopeless darkness, our son, stop it! Stop it! Why, baby, don't you like it? You can't do this! Who says? I say! Is this game over? Yes, yes it is! Oh, oh not by a long shot. I've got a little surprise for you, baby. It's about Sonny Jim. No more, George. Yes, leave her be. I'm running this show. Sweetheart, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. For us, of course. Some rather sad news. <laughs> what is this? Well, Martha, while you were out of the room, while the uh, two of you were out of the room, I mean, I don't know where. Hell, you both must have been somewhere. While you were out of the room... For a while, well, the doorbell chimed, and, uh, well, it's hard to tell you, Martha. Tell me. And uh, what it was, it was good old Western Union, some little boy about 70. Crazy Billy? Yeah, Martha, that's right, Crazy Billy. And he had a telegram, and it was for us, and... I have to tell you about it. Why... Why didn't they phone it? Why did they bring it? Why didn't they telephone it? Some telegrams you have to deliver, Martha. Some telegrams you can't phone. What do you mean? Martha, I can hardly bring myself to say it. <sighs> well, Martha... I'm afraid our boy isn't coming home for his birthday. Of course he is. No, Martha. Of course he is. I say he is. He can't. He is. I say so. Martha, our son is dead. He was killed late in the afternoon on a country road with his learner's permit in his pocket. He swerved to avoid a porcupine and drove straight you into a... You can't do that. Large tree. You cannot do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you should know. Oh, my God, no. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. You can't decide that for yourself. I will not let you do that. I'll have to leave around noon, I suppose. I will not let you decide these because things. Because there are matters of identification, naturally, and arrangements to be made. You can't do this! I will let you do this! Get your hands off me! You don't seem to understand, Martha. I haven't done anything. God. Now, pull yourself together. Our God. son is dead. No. Can you get that into your head? You can't decide these things! Lady, please. Never go! Now listen, Martha, <laughs> listen carefully. We got a telegram. There was a car accident, and he's dead. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Just like that. Now, how do you like it? No! <laughs> Let her go. She'll be all right now. He is dead. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. You cannot. You may not decide these things. He hasn't decided anything, lady. It's not his doing. He doesn't have the power. That's right, Martha. I'm not a god. I don't have the power over life and death. You I? can't kill him. You can't have him die. Lady, please. You can't. 
There was a telegram, Martha. Show it to me. Show me the telegram. I ate it. What did you just say to me? I ate it. Good for you, Martha. Do you think that's the way to treat her at a time like this? Making an ugly goddamn joke like that? Huh? You're not gonna get away with it. You know the rules, Martha. For Christ's sake, you know the rules. What are you two talking about? I can kill him, Martha, if I want to. He is our child. And I have killed him. Yes. I think I understand this. Do you? Jesus Christ, I think I understand this. Good for you, Buster. Jesus Christ, I think I understand this. You have no right. You have no right at all. I have the right, Martha. We never spoke of it, that's all. I could kill him any time I wanted to. But why? Why? You broke our rule, baby. You mentioned him. You mentioned him to someone else. I did not. I never did. Yes, you did. Who? Who? Me. You mentioned him to me. I forget. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when it's night and when it's late and everybody else is talking, I forget and I, I want to mention him, but... But I hold on, but I wanted to so often. Oh, George, you pushed it. There was no need. There was no need for this. I mentioned him, all right, but you didn't have to push it over the edge. You didn't have to kill him. <laughs> Amen. He didn't have to have him die, George. Requiem eternum dona is done. It looks perpetual, Lucia. That wasn't needed. It will be dawn soon. I think the party's over. You couldn't have. Any? We couldn't. We couldn't. Home to bed, children. It's way past your bedtime. Honey? Yes. You two go now. Yes. Yes. Good night. Good night. Sunday tomorrow, all day. Yes. Did you? Did you have to? Yes. It, it was. You had to. Yes. I don't know. It was. Time. Was it? Yes. A cold. It's late. Yes. It will be better. I don't know. It will be. Maybe. I'm not sure. No. Just us? Yes. I don't suppose maybe we could... 
No, Martha. Yes. No. You all right? Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. I am George. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I am George. I am. Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Martha was played by Juliet Stevenson, George by Alex Jennings, Honey by Anastasia Hilly, and Nick by William Hope. The director was Cherry Cookson. <laughs>